Chris says, I have a question about OBJs and STL files. I'll be using a SnapMaker 2. I don't really know what that is. Uh, but in the documentation, it says it accepts OBJs and STL files. My question is, uh, is there any advantage of choosing an OBJ over an STL in 3D printing? It really depends a lot about like your 3D printer. Um, so I think you're right because you're saying that part of your your understanding of an OBJ file is that there's more information in it um, than there is uh, for an STL file. And that's about right. There's a couple of different... And I'm not, I'm not going to say that I'm... Some people out there who know more about this, please feel free to comment, share the knowledge. But there's a couple of differences between an STL file and, um, and something like a OBJ. So first of all, yes, you're right. The OBJ can have more content in it than, than an STL file, for example. So it could be... Many times this comes out of like scanning a surface. I've talked about STL files before, it's triangular, right? OBJ files can also be, I think they can actually be triangular, um, but they can hold more information like color and surface texture and things like that. Not something that we really care much about from a 3D printing standpoint, because in a 3D printing standpoint, we're looking for the raw thing. Um, but if you're scanning, then the texture, the surface texture, color could be could be interesting. But the other thing with an, with an OBJ file is that it can be quad mesh. So STL files, and we've talked about STL files before, STL files in, in our normal kind of environment, remember a couple of weeks ago we did Kathy's um, STL file here with the with the Bonnie, we talked a lot about, about STL files and converting STL files, that they are triangular meshes. I'm not a big fan. Am I, but I, so I am more of a fan of an OBJ in the sense that an OBJ is, can be quad. So what I mean by that is that the STL file here of the Bonnie is these triangular shapes. What is really just, um, you know, it's really just points where you're creating a triangular flat between them. And, and like I've said before, the problem with that, most of the stuff with STL files is that we normally can't control how accurate this, this gets. Now with OBJ, it becomes a little bit different. So if we go in and I actually, I did download an OBJ file. Um, if I go and we insert the same way we do a mess, we go say insert a mess because an OBJ is still a mesh. And I downloaded this free um, sword that I found online because our first question from Ash was in regards to costumes and things. Now you will see here on this, if I zoom in, that this is not triangular shape. This is actually quartz. So that means kind of the same idea as before that it is, you know, a points because if it's scanned in, it's points. But instead of being triangular, what makes it more, you know, rough, we can now make a quad, what makes it more precise. But on top of that, because Fusion 360 is awesome, we can actually turn a quad, what is, again, four, four points into a flat face, into a form tool. Ooh, if you didn't know this. So if I go up here and we turn on our capture design, remember we, we like to do that when working with meshes. We turn that history off by right clicking up here and turn that off. Um, now we actually get an option that we can right click. And instead, we so what we normally do with STL files is we're turning the mesh to a B wrap, what turns it into a solid. We could do the same thing here. But if you go to the convert, you actually now get an option to turn a quad into a new C-spline body. When I do that, and it's going to take a couple of seconds for it to, to convert it, of course. But what happens when, when we're doing that is that now we get this C-spline environment where we can start pulling and shaping and things like that. Now, if we were looking to turn this into a just to 3D print this as it is. Um, if your 3D printer takes 
OBJ files, uh, then that's not a problem, right? Then you can just go ahead and open that OBJ file up inside of your slicer that you're going to be using for 3D printing this. And there's no reason to bring it into Fusion. You can just completely eliminate Fusion. But if you're like me, where you actually, and we're looking at this, you will see that now that mesh of the OBJ have been turned purple, which means that this is now mesh files. I can actually go in to body number seven here. I can right click on that, right? And I can now go in and, um, and I can start working with that, with that body, go to form here. I can literally now go and select, let's see here. If I just only want to, there we go. So I could now go ahead here and select these two faces, right click edit form, and you will now see that I have sculpting tools where I can now modify this shape, whatever, whatever I want, as you've seen me using sculpting tools, uh, sculpting tools before. So you can start manipulating it, turning it into to whatever you want. So that is definitely something that is super awesome about OBJ files, right? That instead of turning them into, and it, we've done this in previous live streams, STL files, triangular mass, we can convert it into a solid, and then we could start, you know, cutting through it and do different things with it here. With the OBJ file, we turn it into a T-spline that makes it, you know, a lot cooler. We can move around with it and things like that. Um, and then we could convert that T-spline back into a solid and then, of course, 3D print it from there. But if you have an OBJ file or something that you already, you don't need to manipulate and your 3D printer can take an OBJ file, then you maybe don't, don't need Fusion. I thought this was a good one to kind of talk about that magic of an OBJ file. So OBJ files, definitely, I love them more than I love STL files because they give me the opportunity to get into T-splines and pulling and doing things um, with, with that there. All right. Um, thank you, Chris. I hope this was useful. Thumbs up if you like this. Thumbs down if you don't. Um, and uh, yeah, let's move on to uh, to the next question.